Okay. Um, tell me about Billy Vukovic. Okay. I think uh, Bill Vukovic, there, there are... It's from, Bill. Yes. Right. I said Billy. Was that his son? Yes. Okay. The, Bill Vukovic. He was also Bill, but he went. we, we call him Billy to, you know, distinguish between one and the other. But Bill Vukovic, there's no question that uh, in the early 1950s, he was the man. And uh, for some people, uh, a number of people recently... Uh, because of all the celebration and, and uh, you know, ranking the drivers and who were the greatest. I know several people that say that Bill Vukovic was the greatest driver ever to come to the Speedway, or the, be the greatest driver ever at the Indianapolis Speedway. And most certainly, he got the place figured out. He was only in five races, and he won two, and he wasn't too far from winning four. Uh, the first year that he came to the track was 1950, and he passed his test, but he didn't make a qualifying attempt. And then in 51, he drove a, um, you know, a second echelon car, to put it politely, and, and came from the back of the pack up to 10th and then dropped out. And then in 1952, he had a brand new car uh, built by Frank Curtis, and it was designed by Frank Kuhn and uh, Jim Travers. And it was the first of the so-called Roadster design, where the engine was offset to the left and the cockpit was offset to the right. So the, the driver would actually sit down low, and instead of having to straddle the, the, uh, the drive shaft, it would run along Lexus's his, uh, left hip. So he could sit down low with, the, with all of the business end over to his left. And that car arrived uh, not in time to qualify on the first day, so he started eighth, but he was leading in, I think, like about four or five laps. And he didn't lead the whole way, but he led much of the 52 race, and he was ahead by a half a minute with eight laps to go when uh, there was a steering failure, which knocked him out. Uh, he came back the next year, started on the pole, led all but five laps, and won the race. And the only five that he didn't lead was when he was making the first uh, pitch stop. I'm going to have to cough. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I got to do a show tonight. I, I bought some mints, but I'm still suffering. Um, in 1954, he had a hard time qualifying with some mechanical problems, so I think he started 19th. But once the race started, he came up through the pack, and then he, he won it again. So he, at the time, was only the third person to win it two years in a row, uh, joining uh, uh, Wilbershaw and Maury Rose. And then at the end of the uh, year, his car owner, Howard Keck, who was rather reclusive, very wealthy oil millionaire, superior oil company, had decided for tax reasons not to run a car in 55. So Vukovic was released to go and drive for somebody else, and he drove for Lindsey Hopkins with Frank Kuhn and Jim Travers. And he was leading that one at about just past the, uh, the one-quarter distance lap 57, and there was an accident on the back stretch, and he became entangled in the accident and uh, lost his life in a subsequent uh, tumble after he touched wheels with a couple of other cars. And he completely left the track, he right? He completely left the track and went end over end uh, uh, just outside of the back stretch, went over the fence, and, and uh, it was a very low sitting fence just north of where the tunnel is now that goes underneath. Uh, uh, just north of turn two. And so, I mean, that was stunning, uh, that, that he would lose his life leading the race, and he was the defending two-time winner. So, you know, it looked like he was on his way to winning for the third year in a row, and he came so close the year before that he led just this phenomenal number of laps over a four-year period.